Um, so, uh, obviously, you've heard I'm now a dad. It's pretty cool. And I think one of the best parts of being a dad is I get to tell dad jokes, uh, which is something I've cringed at for most of my life. But if you'll permit me, I'd like to tell a dad joke that you've probably heard before. And it goes a little something like this. There are two young fish who are happily swimming along together. And along the way, they bump into an older fish who nods at them and says, hey boys, how's the water? The two young fish swim a little bit further. And eventually, one of them turns to the other young fish and says, what the hell is water? (laughs) The idea that these two young fish have only grown up in the water they swim in They have no idea that there is anything else that exists. I think about this dad joke whenever I turn on the TV and I see mobs of young socialists tearing down statues and erasing our country's history. You see, when you grow up in a country with such inherent freedoms like America, it's very easy to take them for granted. Enough years go by without major war, disaster, and you fail to realize the basic freedoms that America provides, the freedom to receive an education, to pursue the career of your choice, to create a business or an entire industry that does not yet exist, the freedom to disagree with your government, the freedom to choose your government. These freedoms are the water to the young fish, the water in which we are all swimming. It's literally what's supporting us, allowing us to swim, move, interact, but it's so pervasive and its creation has become so far removed from our day-to-day lives that to the fish and to the socialist youth, it has become invisible. Today, we are seeing an entire generation of youth being told a series of lies. And we are now sowing what our broken educational system and a corrupt media have reaped. The lie goes something like this, as I alluded to earlier this morning. America is an evil country. America is a racist country. America is so evil, so racist, that not only must we apologize for it, we must tear it down and build it anew in order to erase its evil history. Well, don't believe me, think back to December of 2019, which feels like decades ago. Statues were still standing. The mob had not yet canceled Abraham Lincoln. Little did we know at the time in December of 2019, but the Communist Party of China was unleashing a plague around the world. Now, it took the world a few months to realize what was happening, but if we look to history, this is exactly what communists do. We shouldn't be surprised. They lie, they threaten, they kill dissenters, They did this because they fear the truth. They fear their own citizens. And at the time, the World Health Organization, the organization we pay billions of dollars to help us prevent pandemics, was covering for the Chinese Communist Party's lies, telling us they were doing a great job containing the outbreak. Meanwhile, the communists in China allowed travel from Wuhan to the rest of the world while prohibiting travel from Wuhan, China to the rest of China. Here in America, Many of our own liberal governors use this as an opportunity to blame President Trump. Our own governor in Wisconsin banded together with his fellow liberal governors in the Midwest in order to blame the president. And it didn't end there, as we just heard from our state legislators, instead of strategizing with them, meeting with them on how to responsibly protect Wisconsin and reopen Wisconsin, he instead, or someone on his staff, secretly recorded a conversation in an attempt to blame our state legislators. And he continues to blame leaders in Wisconsin and the White House every day. But the truth is, this isn't just about blaming President Trump. President Trump may be a convenient foil for the left's attacks, but it is about something larger than any particular president. It's about blaming America first. And this is the stark contrast we will see going into November. A party that blames America first, versus a party and a president that puts America first. Now let's go back to the fish in the water. Not only do these people take what we have in America for granted, they also believe that the water is tainted. They believe America is inherently evil and racist, that we as Americans should not celebrate our independence, 
but apologize for it. They believe this country must be torn down, transformed. And while communist China has exported a plague across the globe, while it holds millions of Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps, the woke mob believes America is to blame. Now, why is this happening? Well, most obviously, as the story relates, we got complacent. We won the Cold War. We were told it was the end of history. We all got fat and happy off cheap Chinese goods and debt. And it was easy to take what we have for granted. And we now find ourselves in the early stages of a new Cold War with communist China. It is an existential competition for geopolitical dominance that will define both of our countries for decades to come. Yet we are losing this new Cold War before it even begins because we lack a clear sense of why we deserve to win. Why we in America are the good guys and why the Chinese Communist Party deserves its place on the ash heap of history. Joe Biden, for example, has failed repeatedly to condemn communist China. When he first kicked off his campaign fundraiser in Iowa, Biden was quoted as saying, we talk about China as a competitor, give me a break. They're not a threat to us. That was in line with a career spent not recognizing the threat from China. And when the coronavirus spread across the globe and President Trump called for a ban on travel from China, Biden stated that this is no time for President Donald Trump's record of hysteria and xenophobia. As a senator, Biden voted, voted in favor of welcoming China into the World Trade Organization, the biggest disaster for Midwestern manufacturing in modern history. And as he said at the time, quote, I believe that a rising China is a positive development, not only for China, but also for the US and the world. So we don't have to speculate about whether Biden is fit to be commander in chief. He was senator for 37 years, chair and ranking member of the Foreign Relations Committee for 12 years, and vice president for eight years. In all of those positions, he repeatedly failed the test. As Robert Gates, former defense secretary, said of Biden, he has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. He was against the first Gulf War, for the 2003 war, against the surge in Iraq, advised against killing bin Laden. My friends, that's hard to do. That's like being the Jay Cutler of U.S. foreign policy. But the truth is, this contrast is not just about Trump versus Biden. This election is about the mobs of leftists that stand much taller than Joe Biden. They force those who they disagree with to apologize for the sins of America or be silenced. They force those who they disagree with to kneel before them, adopt their radical beliefs, cancel our history, and tolerate lawlessness under the disguise of justice. That is how great countries die, by bending to the mob. Well, here we say that we refuse to kneel before the mob. We refuse to let this great country crumble before our eyes. And we utterly reject the lie that America is an evil racist country because we know that we, though not perfect, are still the good guys. Three weeks ago, as I've told you now many times, I'm very proud, my wife gave birth to our first child. The very night, first night we took her home and I held her in my arms as my wife finally got some sleep and I made her a promise and it's the same one that I will make to you and that I hope we can all make together this weekend. You were born in the greatest country in the history of the world. We have great friends who have given their life for this great country. We must fight with everything we have to keep this country as great as the one we inherited. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America.